No tech internship this summer? Been there more than once. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm studying product design at Arizona State University and working at Codidex this summer. If you're studying computer science or learning how to code, you probably know that the tech job market has been rough. I know I do. It took me years to land my first internship. But no internship doesn't mean no progress. What I did the summers I didn't have an internship led me to opportunities at Meta, Bank of America, Atlassian, and even Cody Dex. With that said, here are 13 ways you can hire yourself this summer. Number one is teaching others. The best way to learn is to teach. You can't teach others without knowing what you're talking about. In 2022, I taught girls how to make iOS apps with Swift, and now I really know how to make iOS apps. Teaching others shows leadership, people skills, and concept mastery. If you want to get better at these things, you can try tutoring people you know, becoming a teaching assistant for a coding class, writing technical articles, or I recommend the Codydex community, of course, and finding camps or programs hiring for teaching roles. Number two, join a project-based program. Programs like Google Summer of Code, the MLH Fellowship, and Code Labs pair you with mentors with years in, of experience in the industry and give you real project experience. You'll work with your mentor and a team to create a real-world product. At the end of the summer, you'll have created something concrete that you can talk about, maybe even more than something you would have built at a bigger company. Third is building a cool project. There might be something on the back burner that you've been itching to make. Maybe it's something cool that you saw on TikTok or something you actually need to use every day. Maybe it's a cool project that caught your eye in Codedex's project tutorials list. But summer's the perfect time to build something that's fun and that you can't make in your classes or in the workplace. Your little project could even lead to something bigger if you go all in. This is a site called Wake Up Bra, a site that my friend David and I made during the COVID area that detects when you're falling asleep in meetings or classes and it plays fun, silly, obnoxious noises to wake you up. Wakey, 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 it's time for school. It's a little more funny than it is practical, but that's what personal projects are about. I left 40 real world projects for you to choose from in the description below. Number four, attend tech events. I visited a lot of tech offices because companies love to host events over the summer to help you grow into the industry and learn more about their companies. I'd go with friends and play trivia, do escape rooms, get fed catered food, which is really good, and network and sat in on panels about career growth and imposter syndrome. If this sounds like your vibe and you want to meet other students in tech, you can search LinkedIn for student or intern events, join the organizations like Rewriting the Code and Color Stack, and even platforms like Luma and Eventbrite. Luma has a lot of events geared towards people in tech, so be sure to check that out. Number five, go to hackathons. I think hackathons are great learning environments because they supply you with everything you need. Mentorship, technical workshops, and a lot of them are pretty niche too. Food, friends, and swag. Hackathons are great because you have limited time and therefore you need to build fast and ship fast and you'll come out with a project and there's no pressure for your project to be perfect, like in the real world. My favorite source of finding hackathons are through Major League Hacking or MLH and DevPost. Number six, sign up for conferences. I got my job at Bank of America through the Grace Hopper Celebration, which is a conference for women in tech. I did my interview on site with a Bank of America employee and got an offer two weeks later. It's a great way to go through an expedited and more guaranteed interview process and to actually meet and learn from companies that you're interested in. Are you cleared to be in this sector? Bank of America cleared us to be in this sector. We might believe that if this one wasn't with you. <laughs> There's so many conferences that happen through the year where you can meet with recruiters and learn more about their companies and potentially even interview at the conference like I did. You can even apply for conference scholarships or connect with your school's career resource center to learn about how to reduce costs when it comes to attending these conferences because they can get expensive. Number seven, take a course or attend a camp. My dad is a software engineer and he tells me that even after decades in the industry, he's still learning new things every day. So, might as well pick something that sounds really interesting to you and learn more about it. Check out the Codydex course catalog as well as certificate programs, camps, and courses at your school that you can take. 8. Reach out to startups and research departments. My first internship came from sending an email to a student-run startup. I was still in high school and I had no idea if it would go anywhere but I actually ended up staying with the company until they got acquired in 2021, and I became a vice president with my own interns at 18, which is crazy. 
So you never know what happens if you do shoot your shot. Startups are a lot more flexible with hiring than bigger companies and reaching out to a startup that interests you might even be a little bit easier than applying to a role at a big company that gets thousands and thousands of applicants. I got my job at Cody Dex by cold emailing Sunny and look where I am now. Research opportunities are also more available than traditional internships and you can reach out to professors at your school and other schools to ask if you can contribute to different projects. You can also look at REU programs if you're looking for something a little more structured. Doing research as an undergrad might be helpful if you are looking to pursue either a master's or a PhD in the future or if research is something that genuinely interests you. Number nine, volunteering your skills. If there's a cause or a program or anything that's meaningful to you at all that you'd love to help support in some way, you could offer your tech skills as a way of giving back. You could volunteer for nonprofits, both tech and not tech, clubs, or local businesses that need help with technology. Number 10 are industry programs. I've experienced at Meta, Accenture, AT&T, and Raytheon on my resume. Not because I formally worked there, but because I did industry programs with them. Through these programs, you could build smaller projects, take quick courses, receive mentorship, and gain advice from speakers about how to succeed in a tech role. Number 11, join clubs on campus. Joining a club can show your interest in tech and show initiative outside of the classroom. It's also a great way to make friends and have a good time. If general computer science clubs are not your vibe, you could even start a club if you feel like there isn't a club out there that's suited for you, like a design club, a game dev club, or a project building club. I think that having clubs on your resume and leadership on your resume can help you stand out and could even be more valuable than a job that you're not super interested in or doesn't align with what you want to pursue as a technologist. Number 12 is to find a mentor. I've had mentors from Meta, Uber, DoorDash, Palo Alto Networks, and Apple. Some of them I found through mentorship programs, others I just reached out to because honestly, I thought they seemed really cool. I'm lucky to say that some of these mentorships have even evolved to friendship. If you send a message to a potential mentor on LinkedIn, many people love to talk about how they got to where they are and share their knowledge with you, as long as you seem genuine about it and aren't just trying to get a referral. Last of all, number 13, find a cool community out there. Whether through clubs, Discord servers, community programs, there is always a space for you that will support you while you're going through this part of your coding journey. It's always nice to have a group of people who understand what you're going through and can empathize with where you're at at that point in their life and have made it to the other side. These groups can help guide you through what you're going through because they've been through it themselves. And the nights that I'd be up until sunrise just applying to internships, just to be ghosted later. I watched my friends get internships and did all of these things that I mentioned, wondering what I was doing wrong when it felt like I was putting my foot into every single door. If you're in this boat, I understand more than anyone. It truly sucks. Most importantly, your work and your health aren't dependent on you getting a formal internship. Be creative and brilliant, even without the title. Keep showing up, keep getting better, and keep learning. And opportunities that are meant for you will find you. They found me. I hope this video gives you a few ideas on ways that you can grow your experience and your skills. How are you hiring yourself this summer? Let us know in the comments and I'll catch you later. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> no, wait.